Hello everyone and welcome back to Clinical Cousins YouTube channel where today we're going to go over how odorant molecules eventually turn in to the interpretation of smell in our brain. So first it's good to know some clinical terms so that you may hear uh, you may hear them in the hospital especially with COVID going around right now. Anosmia means a lack of smell. Hypoosmia means a decreased sense of smell and dysosmia is an altered or distorted sense of smell. So what can cause the lack of ability to smell? Well, like we discussed in our COVID video, the COVID-19 virus can alter our ACE2 receptors and cause a lack of smell, but also fractures to the cribriform plate, upper respiratory infections, traumatic brain injuries, tumors in the anterior fossa, or destruction of our smell receptors by physical or toxic odorants. Also, a lot of us uh, if we have colds, uh, we, we know that we can't smell because our nose is all clogged up and messed up. So first we have to discuss what are odorants. Well, these are little particles which are found in their gaseous forms that interact with our smell receptors. So this is why we can smell hot foods more easily. And test question, why you want to give your nauseous cancer patients cold, high calorie foods with plastic utensils. So hot foods will have more heat and will cause more of these little molecules to be released in their gaseous forms. So when we breathe in through our nose, the air becomes turbulent. And I use that word because we have turbinates, three turbinates in our nose, which help to stir up that air so that we have the highest chance of interacting with our olfactory receptors. So it's so easy to know because turbinates in our nose cause our air to become turbulent. So these three turbinates house our olfactory receptors shown here in blue. Now there are three types of olfactory epithelial cells that are of importance to us in this lecture. So when we are sad, our nose runs, we call this sobbing. So think S-O-B, sob. Or you can think that S-O-B made me sob. However you remember it, if you're eating onion pizza, whatever you need to think of, just know that we have support cells, we have olfactory receptors, and then we have our basal cells. So first we're gonna talk about support cells. These have little microvilli and secrete substances that help us capture these odorants. Basal cells are at the base of our epithelium and they actually are undifferentiated stem cells. So these basal cells, actually, they keep on proliferating. Remember, proliferating, proliferating. They keep on generating uh, new versions of themselves and will eventually become new olfactory receptors. So we can start to increase the amount of olfactory receptors once these die off. Now, we're gonna talk about the olfactory receptors. These are the important ones. So olfactory cells are interesting because they're not only receptors. Uh, like some of the other uh, special senses that we've talked about. They're also primary afferent neurons. Remember, afferent means to take up to the brain. So this means that they are the first part of the train of connections that make up the neural pathway to our brain. These olfactory receptors shown here in blue, they bind to the odorant molecules and then turn this binding process into electrochemical energy, uh, which then it transduces this odorant molecule into a form of message which is then passed along to our brain. So let's talk about that process which is called transduction or the transformation of odorant smelly molecules into what we interpret as smells in our brain. So what happens is that we're sitting down at our table and we have a really hot plate of strong smelling onion, remember we're crying, sob, vegetable soup or in this case I've drawn a slice of pizza because I'm not that great of an artist. So. Uh, so we have a vegetable soup, hot pizza. We know that these foods are going to release gaseous odorant molecules which enter our nose as we breathe. So our turbinates, this makes our air turbulent, warm. I know people hate this word moist, uh, which eventually allows our olfactory receptors to effectively bind to these little odorant molecules. So the specific odorant molecules for carrots onions, broth, pepperoni, cheese, bread, can bind to any of these thousands of specific receptors, which are all coupled to G proteins. So it's sort of humorous that uh, these G proteins for olfaction, OLF, 
are abbreviated as GOLF, so G olfactory, uh, GOLF. So these GOLF proteins are coupled to adenylylcyclase. And we know from our previous videos on the autonomic nervous system that uh, when these GOLF proteins are activated, they activate adenylylcyclase, which turns ATP into cyclic AMP. So cyclic AMP is an important second messenger and eventually this increased amount of cyclic AMP will result in action potentials that eventually release different neurotransmitters which start a chain reaction of messages which is passed into our brain. So think of the brain as sort of a person in the audience at a piano concert. So these individual smells are like little notes that are being played for our brain. Our brain is able to take all of these little notes and then make sense of them so our brain takes these little notes and then instantly turns them into this symphony of smells that we can recognize as vegetable soup or pepperoni pizza. So now it's important to know that these olfactory receptor neurons are on our turbinates. But to enter the brain, we know that our brain has a skull around it, so it has to enter the skull in some way. How do they do this? Well, they enter through this porous cribiform plate. So this sort of looks like a chia pet. You know, the chia pet has little holes all over and then it starts to grow hair. This is kind of like an upside down version of that. These are our, uh, this is our cribiform plate, which has little um, receptors that allow our sense of smell to be carried up into our brain. So what happens is they combine in synapse, all these little golf cells, they combine in synapse on our olfactory bulb, which has a mitral cell. So important note, there might be thousands of these little G proteins that are firing onto one mitral cell. Now from that, from the mitral cell, from the olfactory bulb, it travels to our olfactory cortex in our brain. So these neurons combine to form our first cranial nerve, the olfactory nerve. So how would you test the first cranial nerve's function? Well, maybe some vegetable soup, maybe some pizza, whatever you're doing, just make sure that it's hot so that your patient can smell it. As always, thank you for taking the time to learn with us today and remember to like and subscribe for more content. Thank you.